find a beautiful piece of art. If you fall in love with Van Gogh or Matisse or John Oliver Killens, or if you fall in love with the music of Coltrane, the music of Aretha Franklin, or the music of Chopin, find some beautiful art and admire it, and realize that that was created by human beings just like you. No more human, no less. Maya Angelou I love performing. I shall perform until the day I die. Josephine Baker Grand Boulevard. The neon lights of the fabulous fox shine down the street. The white lit letters of a vertical sign on an ornate stone building read Powell. Logo. Arts United STL. A silver arch that ends at a wavy river. The doors to Powell swing open. You know I hate to see the, evening sun the long marble down. lobby. Produced by Opera Theatre of St. Louis. In partnership with St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Switch, HEC, and Rack. Presenting sponsors, Noemi and Michael Nidor. The lobby is cream with gold and red accents. Tall columns with gold capitals reach all the way to the high ceilings, where a row of crystal chandeliers hang down the center. Lush red carpeted stairs and handrails lead through a door into the performance hall. A figure stands alone on the brightly lit stage. Thousands of red cushioned seats sit empty. The balcony is bare under the palatial cream and gold decorated sculptural ceiling. Wearing an opulent white sweetheart necklined top with short puffed sleeves and wide black pants and a sparkling bracelet, host Andrea Purnell turns from the empty seats to the stage. Good evening, St. Louis, and welcome to Arts United STL. I'm Andrea Purnell coming to you live from Pow Hall. Like all of you, I am longing for the day when we can safely gather in beautiful spaces to experience art together again. The COVID-19 pandemic has been devastating for so many. Artists in particular have seen their livelihoods disappear overnight. And right now, they need us. That is why we're here tonight. We're here to celebrate the St. Louis arts community. Now, I recognize that it's hard to celebrate right now as we grapple with yet another example of brutality against a black person in America. The arts community in St. Louis grieves the loss of George Floyd. We stand with communities of color, with the disenfranchised, and accountability. Art is about empathy. Art is the antidote to hate. We are here tonight to bring hope and joy, love and support to everyone, and especially to the artists all across the region. Their work gives so much to so many, and they inspire and comfort us. They help us to connect and understand each other. They help St. Louis thrive and prosper, and tonight, tonight is for them. Throughout the evening, we'll be asking you to support the Artist Relief Fund. The fund is a program of the Regional Arts Commission that distributes emergency grants to working artists. You can give any amount at any time at the link on your screen. Together, we can raise at least $250,000 for our local artist. To do that, Opera Theater of St. Louis has brought together 16 of St. Louis' finest organizations to help put on tonight's show. First up is The Sheldon with Brian Owens and the 442s doing their rendition of Harold Melvin's soul classic, Wake Up Everybody. Five instrumentalists made up of piano and strings and a vocalist are on stage at the Sheldon Concert Hall. They are safely spaced from one another and they each are wearing surgical masks imprinted with the group's name, the 442s. Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more backwards thinking, time for thinking ahead. 
world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war, and poverty. Won't you make them happy before they pass away? Let's you and me all wake up and change the world we love. Every segment you're going to see tonight was made especially for you, even amid the challenge of social distancing. We want to thank all of the organizations tonight for their enthusiasm. Ladies and gentlemen, our goal is to raise $250,000. Gifts of any size will make such a huge difference for these artists and their families. If you'd like to call, representatives are waiting for you right now from our local arts institution standing by to answer your call. Give a call, you never know who might answer the phone. Joining us next is someone who is no stranger to St. Louis's stage or to your TV screens. Over to you, Ellie. Two-time Emmy Award nominee, Ellie Kemper. Hi, I'm Ellie Kemper and I'm from St. Louis. 
So I love the blues, I love the cardinals, I love toasted ravioli, and even more than that, I love my fellow artists. So please give whatever you can to Arts United St. Louis and please help keep art alive in the Lou. And I promise you, when this is all over, we are celebrating with so much toasted ravioli, it will disgust you. But in the meantime, give what you can and help keep art alive in the Lou. Stay safe, everyone. Scene. Thanks, Ellie, and I promise to hold you to that toasted ravioli date. We are off to an amazing start. With over $125,000 raised so far for Artist Relief Fund, we're so grateful to our presenting sponsors, Noemi and Michael Nydorf, our champions, Edward Jones, Emerson, and Switch. With additional support from the people and organizations you see on your screen now. Karen and Mont Levy, John Russell, Terry and Sally Schnook, Steinberg Family Foundation, Pam and Greg Trapp, PNC, Wells Fargo Advisors. Remember, you can donate anytime online, by phone, or by text. Up next, from the St. Louis Ballet, please welcome Tiffany Moray and Matthew DeBole. They are partners in life and on stage, and they will be dancing to the music of Mendelssohn, performed by St. Louis's own Ariana String Quartet. The two dancers stand in front of a graffiti wall. She's on her toes, slowly steps away from him, spinning, lunging to the left and to the right. She lunges again, tiptoes away from him, extends her leg to the back, now tiptoes towards him at Keener Plaza. Stepping away and lunging forward, he moves to towards her, puts his arm around her waist, leans her and drags her backwards. Lifts her back up, she extends her leg back and kicks to the front. He lifts her and slowly glides her down his body with the arch in the background. She extends her leg back, they skip over to the side. She comes towards him, he lifts her again. She has one leg bent, one extended, extends the bent leg and he puts her back down. She spins away, smiling, puts her hand in his, he twirls her, puts her other hand in his, twirls her again, and twirls her back, lifting her and walking her around. Puts both of her feet back on the ground, and she steps away from him. She extends her arms above her, and he lifts her high into the air, one leg extended back, her arms high above her, as he slowly walks in a circle. She glides down his body, extending the one leg down, landing on one toe, and then the other toe. She spins away from him. They both lunge in opposite directions. She comes back to him. She pushes her away and lifts her leg back, coming back towards him, spins, lifts her arms around her head. He puts his arm around her waist, leans her back. She extends one leg forward as he slowly walks her around as she balances on that one foot. He lifts her again, spins her and puts her back down. She walks away from him slowly as he gazes after her. She turns and smiles, puts her hand in his. They turn away from us and walk onto the Keener Plaza lawn with the arch and old courthouse in the background. Tonight is about our artist. So we wanna be sure that you hear from them about what the Artist Relief Fund means and how you can support and how it will make a huge difference. Here are just a few words from our artist. Playwright Mariah the civilization Richardson. civilization is remembered by its art. So with that said, art is essential. It is part of what is essential in keeping us going in this pandemic. Photographer Jess Duggan. These past few months have been incredibly difficult, and I found that in these moments of difficulty, so many of us, myself included, have turned to art to find comfort, to feel connected to each other, to make meaning of this world we're living in and these experiences that we're having, and also to find beauty and to find joy. Carmen R. Gwynn, Artistic Director, Almas del Ritmo Dance Company. Well, the Regional Arts Commission and the STL Arts community is doing is 
really working to provide a way for us to be able to, our artists to be able to um, get back on the stage again. Imar Arkins, Irish singer and fiddle player. Giving artists room to breathe and allowing them to focus on creating, composing, and sharing their talents in many new ways. Support from RAC can be the difference between artists being able to bring work into the world and not being able to bring work into the world. And right now, artists need that support more than they've ever needed it before. And we need to see that art more than we've ever needed to see it before. We need to connect with each other. We need to continue creating. We need to be able to come together as a community. And Rack, you make that happen. So support from all of you would mean that you care not only about us as artists, but you care about how our civilization is going to be remembered. This is just a small sampling of the musicians, actors, dancers, and visual artists who make up our artistic community. Their work inspires us, and we're so grateful for what they bring to St. Louis. And now, to commemorate the rich cultural legacy that today's artists are a part of, we have a very special word from our friends at the Missouri History Museum. Missouri Historical Society, Sharon Smith, Curator. Greetings from the Missouri Historical Society. We want to celebrate and encourage today's artists and performers by reminding you that you are supported by and a part of more than two centuries of the performing arts in St. Louis. Here is just a glimpse of that legacy. The earliest performances in St. Louis brought magic and laughter to the young town on the frontier. The Missouri Gazette gives the first reference of public performance in 1814 at the Joseph Robidoux House. It was a performance of magic arts by Eugene Leitensdorfer. January 1815, the paper provides the first mention of an actual theatrical performance to be presented at the courthouse, a comedy, school for authors, and the farce, budget of blunders. There would also be performances in an old salt house in these early years until a serious actor businessman comes to St. Louis. Excitement grew when legitimate theater houses started springing up. New York-born actor and businessman Noah Miller Ludlow came to St. Louis in the 1820s. In 1837, he opened the first St. Louis theater at the corner of 3rd and Olive Streets with partner and theater manager Saul Smith. The St. Louis theater provided 1,500 seats over three tiers plus the main floor. A young woman wrote to her mother in Ohio in June 1837 saying, they are opening a new theater here that will be opened on the 4th of July. It is a very large and quite handsome building. Several more theaters were built in the 1850s. Now St. Louis theater life reached new heights and new audiences after the Civil War. Post-Civil War St. Louis saw the rise of a burgeoning theater town as it boasted 11 theaters by 1880. Another 12 theaters would be built between 1880 and 1910. Eventually, vaudeville acts booked the theaters, and some of the theaters began to pair moving pictures with legitimate theater. The live theater would wane as the motion picture theaters grew through the 20th century. Now, Catherine Dunham brought an innovative style of dance and choreography to the theater world. She was a world-renowned dancer, choreographer, author, educator, and social activist. Her dance techniques were heavily influenced by ethnographic research of traditional dances in the Caribbean in the 1930s. Dunham organized her own dance troupe, which toured the world from the late 1930s to the early 1960s. In 1967, she established a multidisciplinary school for arts and humanities in East St. Louis, while an artist in residence at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. She envisioned this school as a tool to fight poverty and civil unrest in the city. Today, St. Louis is fortunate to have many live theaters and performances from which to choose, many of which are represented in the program tonight. The Missouri Historical Society team looks forward to when we can once again see lit stages and capacity crowds enjoying the brilliant work of talented performers. We miss you. Missouri Historical Society. Former Congressman Dick Gephardt. Hi, I'm Dick Gephardt. The arts remind us of the beauty in the world and the beauty in each and every one of us. And artists do more than entertain. They counsel, they comfort, they heal. We need them to lead happy and fulfilled lives. And now the artists of St. Louis need us to help them through this difficult time. So please support Arts United St. Louis and help keep arts alive. Thank you. 
and thank you for your support, Congressman Gephardt. Now, we know there's no replacement for live performance, but we can all do our part to keep art alive. Across the region, artists are finding new ways to create and inspire during the pandemic. Your gift tonight will help sustain these artists now and in the years to come. Tonight, we get to see a few of the bright faces of the future. We welcome members from the St. Louis Children's Choir performing a piece that was originally planned for their spring recital. As you can imagine, social distancing makes it quite difficult to get a choir together, but that did not stop this adventurous group. Artistic director Barbara Berner conducted the children in groups of six while social distancing. But wait until you see what a little movie magic can do. An empty Sheldon Auditorium. Out of nowhere, rows of children appear. The first row, the kids wear white shirts, black pants. The other kids wear red robes with white collars. Now we see the younger children and the two back rows. slowly fading out, leaving us with an empty auditorium. Two-time Tony Award winner Hello, Norbert Leo Butts. My name is Norbert Leo Butts, and I am from the Lou. Go Cardinals. Um, I'm so honored to, to make this little video for you for our artist relief in St. Louis. I was raised uh, right on the south side on Holly Hills between Morgan Ford and Graboy. I went to Bishop DeBerg High School where I got involved in theater, um, and then I went on and, and uh, studied acting at the conservatory at Webster University. Um, and uh, it, it changed my life. Um, had I not had access to those um, institutions, um, I wouldn't be making my career, my living today, raising my own kids as a singer and as an actor. I specifically remember the moment we were on a field trip for an English class at DeBerg to go see the Glass Menagerie at the Rep in St. Louis back in 1980, whatever. And while all the other kids were kind of misbehaving and cracking up and uh, I was riveted. I remember being absolutely riveted by what was happening on that stage. And it changed my life forever. Um, that's the power that the arts can have um, on, on a young mind. Um, 
And it's why it's so important that we keep our institutions solvent and we keep them vital. Um, I so appreciate you letting me speak tonight. I miss you all like crazy. I can't wait to get home and to see some of the great art that St. Louis has to offer. Stay safe, everybody. The power of the arts is right. Now let's see your power of giving. Can we see the new number, please? Wait, is that right, Tracy? $155,000. Wow, St. Louis, thank you. This is amazing. You can join us tonight by texting artist to the phone number on your screen. Gifts of any amount will add to the wave of love and support for our St. Louis artist. And now, from Jazz St. Louis, please welcome Pops Jackson, Bob Debo, Montez Coleman, Matt Sewell, and Claire Maui performing This I Dig of You. As this video opens, a drummer is at a trap set wearing a mask. He begins the beat for Hank Mobley's This I Dig of You. The pianist and the saxophonist come along for the ride. We are on stage at the Faring Jazz Bistro at Jazz St. Louis, in the Grand Center area of the city. Jazz St. Louis is a modern jazz venue for nationally known acts and also local professional and youth groups. The pianist also is wearing a surgical mask. The saxophonist is not, for obvious reasons. They are part of a quintet with a bassist and guitarist rounding out the sound, at safe distances of course, and they are likewise wearing masks. The camera zooms in to each player as they take jazz solos.
That was fantastic. Thank you. Tonight's broadcast features just a few of the dozens of organizations that make St. Louis such a special place for the arts. We celebrate them all and the amazing ways they keep art alive in the loo. Here's a taste of the many artists and arts organizations that call St. Louis home. Photos and videos of performances. Consuming Kinetics Dance Company. Anurag School of Music. SAIT. Intercultural Music Initiative. Italian Film Festival USA. St. Louis Mexican Dance. River Styx. Tropical Mood of St. Louis. Lizette Mata and Our Lady of Guadalupe Dancers. Brighton Beach Memoirs at the New Jewish Theater. Union Avenue Opera. Lamar Harris, trombonist. Who are the people in your neighborhood? In your neighborhood? In your neighborhood? Oh, who are the people in your neighborhood? The people that you meet each day. Hi, my name is Eric Slaughter. I'm a dancer and musician. I miss Jubilee, and I perform with my band in St. Louis. I Brian am Owens. a performing artist. I'm a recording artist. I love performing live on stage. I love being in the studio with my friends and my fellow musicians. And because of the pandemic, I can't do that now. Maria the things Ojas that we Castro. enjoy doing with our family and friends and for others has now been put to a halt. I lost 14 jobs on one Monday. <laughs> Ryan Marquez. This season of life has been really trying I think normal for musicians won't happen until around next year. Art is my livelihood, and the livelihood of millions across the nation. Some of the most moving experiences involve being in crowded spaces. So the situation for music and artists as well is that as things open up and as they start to feel like things are progressing to be normal, they actually won't be yet for art. Creatives need to know that you do love and that you do care about their artistic work that they do. The need to support our artists is very real. We need to support our creatives. They bring so much to our community. The need, it's so great. There's so many artists like me who need support. We must do all that we can to keep art alive during these challenging times. I want to thank RAC for helping me and other artists in the St. Louis community by establishing the Artist Relief Fund. You can help us keep this fund going so other artists can receive support too. The creative community needs your support, needs your help. Support the Regional Arts Commission and all the wonderful works that they're doing. Stay safe, stay blessed. Let us stand together to keep art alive. Let us stand together to keep art alive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And keep swinging. And remember, we all need somebody to lean on. Remember that the Artist Relief Fund provides emergency grants to working artists who've lost significant income due to COVID-19 pandemic. These grants help cover urgent, life-sustaining expenses such as rent, groceries, childcare, and utilities. If you are a working artist in St. Louis, you can apply for support at the link on your screen. Next up, from the National Blues Museum, please welcome Dramon Crenshaw, J. Samuel Davis, Alexis Mason, Amber Rose, Tyler White, and Charles Kreff. From the Black Rep, performing Black and Blue, from Fats Waller's Ain't Misbehavin'. The facade of the National Blues Museum in downtown St. Louis. A dimly lit stage lighted with dim blue lights. Center stage, a group of five singers wearing mismatched face masks and formal attire. One by one, each singer takes their place at a mic and removes their mask. Pianist fingers on the keys. No joys for me. No even the 
all but four people who died from COVID-19 in St. Louis, Missouri were black. Business Insider. The pianist's fingers again. African Americans are dying from the coronavirus at a startlingly higher rate in Missouri and Illinois. KSDK.com. African Americans struggle with disproportionate COVID death toll. NationalGeographic.com. Coronavirus sends unemployment claims skyrocketing in Kansas, Missouri. KCTV5. Parson announces shift in effort to help unemployed as Missouri COVID-19 cases surpass 10,000. Fox2now.com. The official unemployment rate hit 14.7% in April, its highest since the Great Depression, when it exceeded 25%, CNBC. A depression label could be appropriate if the unemployment rate exceeds 20% for a long period of time, CNBC. Job losses reached 20.5 million in April as coronavirus pandemic spreads. USA Today. How long before 20.5 million lost jobs come back? Los Angeles Times. Emmy and Golden Globe winner Sterling K. Brown. Greetings and salutations, St. Louis. This is Sterling K. Brown here uh, talking to you on behalf of Arts United STL. Um, the artists of St. Louis need you right now. Uh, before this quarantine, before this pandemic, it was the shows that they performed in that captivated us, that brought us together for a sense of community. Um, to share in the collective history of our city, uh, to share in the collective history of humanity. Um, there are no such shows being performed right now, and uh, the artists need you. Um, so I'm asking with respect, with whatever you can, please dig deep and donate to Arts United STL. I appreciate you on behalf of all of the artists working in St. Louis. God bless. Be well. Thank you, Sterling K. Brown, and thank you to the Black Rep for that riveting performance. This pandemic has taken so much from our community, and it's devastating the effect on the vulnerable among us, 
People of color, the elderly, and the poor have been hit the hardest. And even if you're not in a high-risk group, someone you care about probably is. We are all in this together, St. Louis. And diversity is what makes our local art scene so beautiful. So please, help keep our arts community strong and ready to return to the stage as soon as it's safely possible to do so. Up next, we have quite a treat for you. Christian Stonev is a fifth generation circus performer. Christian and his beloved Chihuahua Scooby, yeah, I said that right, were finalists for America's Got Talent and have performed in halftime shows for more than 200 NBA and college basketball games from their home in Las Vegas and presented by our friends at Circus Flora. Please join me in welcoming Christian and Scooby. Hi, Christian Stoinev here representing Circus Flora, and we're excited to be amongst so many great St. Louis institutions teaming up for such a great cause. It's a difficult time for artists, especially those of us in live entertainment, and the RAC's Artist Relief Fund has been doing an awesome job helping those artists in St. Louis. So without further ado, me and my partner in crime are going to show you what we've been up to during quarantine. Enjoy. Wearing neon green socks and shoelaces, black pants, and a white t-shirt, Christian steps onto a small platform and leans with his left hand onto a thigh-high pole in the middle. With a hop, he propels his body into the air, legs spread wide. He moves his legs together, bends his knees, swings his right arm to the pole, and switches hands. He pulls his legs straight up to the center, toes pointed to the sky. His back is straight and his muscular arm stretches to the side. He draws his legs closed and floats his arm up to rest flat against his thigh. He lowers his arm and dismounts. Christian kneels on one knee and leans back. Scooby runs across the space and jumps onto his chest. As Christian stands, Scooby climbs over his shoulder. Christian crouches down and flips over in a somersault. As he rolls, Scooby trots down Christian's back and between his legs, then up over his chest and to his neck again for a second roll. Christian stands, bent at the waist, arms reaching to the ground into a handstand with bent knees. Scooby climbs over Christian's backside and perches on Christian's upturned feet. Slowly, Christian straightens his legs, lifting Scooby high in the air. Christian bends his knees. Scooby trots down from his feet, then down his back as he stands. Christian smiles broadly and gives Scooby a squeeze and kisses his head as he lowers him down from his shoulder. Christian picks up a small red hoop and twirls it around his fingers several times, then flips it in the air. He lowers Scooby down to the grass and holds the ring several inches off the ground. Scooby glides easily through the ring multiple times. Each time, Christian moves the ring slightly higher. Christian tosses down the ring and Scooby leaps into his arms. They retrieve a basketball. He places the ball in front of Scooby on the grass, who climbs on top. Scooby balances on top as another ball is placed in front of him. His little paws roll the ball forward and he walks onto the next ball, rolling it forward as well. Christian scoops up Scooby and picks up a small basketball and throws it in the air. He rolls the other balls out of the way and he brings forward a tiny basketball hoop. He positions Scooby a few feet away and Scooby grabs a small squishy ball in his mouth. On his back legs, he walks forward to just under the hoop, spins, and slam dunks the ball. Scooby grabs the ball again. Christian picks up Scooby, ball still in his mouth. He tosses the ball down and he attaches another pole to the platform. He kisses Scooby, who climbs onto his shoulder and then onto his back as Christian leans forward, holding the pole with his right hand his left arm out to the side and his legs straight out behind him. Scooby sits up on Christian's back on his hind legs, his front paws waving up and down. Slowly, Christian begins to rotate in this position using his right hand on the pole. Scooby continues to rear back and wave his front paws as they spin together. They revolve all the way around back to their starting position. Scooby climbs up to his shoulder and Christian cradles him as he lowers himself from the pole. On behalf of myself, and Circus Flora, we'd like to thank all the organizations in St. Louis and the wonderful artists from St. Louis. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Two-time Tony loser, Christopher Sieber. Hello, everyone. It's Christopher Sieber, two-time Tony Award loser. Um, anyway, hey, uh, I wanted to reach out to Arts United St. Louis, or STL, as the kids are saying. Uh, my friend Jack Lane, I think you all know him. 
He is uh, one of the producers of one of my favorite shows of all time that I've done, and it's called The Prom, and that's me. Points to poster. I stole the window card. And he also is one of the co-pros of a show that I'm currently in as well, and that's called Company at the Bernard Jacobs Theater on West 45th Street, starring Patti Lapone and Katrina Link and, well, me. Um, when I heard about this project, uh, Arts, Arts United St. Louis, it made complete sense to me because that's what we do as artists. We always come together. We always help. When things get rough, when disasters happen, uh, hurricanes, wildfires, uh, earthquakes, we're the ones that will step up and do everything we can by using what we have, using our talents to raise money. And at this time in the world, we're all in this together. And the best way to help the arts right now is give them as much support as you possibly can. We will survive. All of us will. Things will get better. We will get back to normal. And I hope you all stay safe. And please, give anything you can to Arts United St. Louis. Take care, everyone. Good evening. I'm Mont Levy. I'm chair of the Regional Arts Commission. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in this evening to this most important telethon to help the working artists of our St. Louis region. The St. Louis arts and culture sector has been devastated by this pandemic. We are an industry that is nearly $600 million, employing nearly 20,000 full-time equivalents, and every working artist has had their gigs canceled. Nearly 90% of institutions in our region have canceled events. And so tonight, your help to support those in need cannot be overstated. I want to thank Opera Theater of St. Louis and Andrew Jorgensen, Shakespeare Festival of St. Louis, and Tom Ridgely, and all of the participating arts organizations who are making this fabulous event happen. Thank you. Dr. Good Sam evening. Page, I'm Dr. St. Louis Sam County Page, Executive. And I know how challenging the last few months have been for everyone in St. Louis. But I've been incredibly encouraged to see our community coming together to support one another in this time of need. Few things bring St. Louis together like our incredible arts organizations and artists. Whether catching a show at the Muni or visiting the Art Museum's latest exhibition, I look forward to the day when I can take my family to experience our community's artists' newest creations. In the meantime, please consider giving what you can to support Arts United STL and help keep arts alive in the Lou. Thank you and stay safe. As Dr. Page said, by supporting local artists in St. Louis, you're helping make this community a great place to live, work, and play. And remember, our goal tonight is to raise $250,000 for the Artist Relief Fund. A quarter of a million dollars, folks. We can do it with your help. If you're able, please take a moment now to visit the link on your screen. In 2016, the inaugural Tennessee Williams Festival included a series of one-act plays by the St. Louis native, reprising their performances from the St. Louis Rooming House plays. Please join me in welcoming the incomparable Anita Jackson and pianist Charles Krepp from Fox Theater's Curtain Call Lounge performing Paradise. An African-American woman with dark, short, close-cropped hair is wearing silver-colored earrings with glittering spangles hanging low. She also wears a long floral brocaded coat. She is accompanied by a gentleman pianist seen in the background in soft focus. And a heavenly kiss can 
and he holds me As the song progresses, we note that the video is presented as if it were a series of motion picture stills, all presented in sepia tone. Through much of the piece, the camera pans gently between the pianist and the singer. Eventually, the two musicians are shown in split screen. Drama Desk Award nominee, Brian Batt. Hey, St. Louis. Brian Batt here. I'm an actor. Maybe you saw Mad Men or some Broadway shows I've been in. Or maybe you saw me as Edna Turnblatt in Hairspray at the Muni a couple of years ago. Well, I'm coming to you from New Orleans, your sister city. And we have a lot in common. Besides the Mississippi River, we have Tennessee Williams, one of the most wonderful playwrights and writers of the 20th century. You gave the world Tennessee Williams and New Orleans nurtured Tennessee Williams. And it was my great pleasure to present a little part of my play I wrote, Dear Mr. Williams, at the Arts Awards event last year. Um, I was amazed at, at how the entire arts community of St. Louis come together to support each other. Um, trust me, that does not happen a lot. And it doesn't happen everywhere, but it definitely happens in St. Louis. Um, later that year, I had the pleasure of presenting the entire play through the St. Louis Tennessee Williams Festival and had a blast. Uh, these are troubling times and the arts need all the support they can get. The arts, they feed our soul and we need that now more than ever. So be as generous as you can, St. Louis. Thank you. Opera Theatre of St. Louis and the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra have been partnering for more than 40 years creating magic for Opera Theater's spring season. For tonight's program, Opera Theater's 2020 Jardine Young Artist, from their homes across the country, and musicians from our own St. Louis Symphony Orchestra are joining forces once again for an unforgettable performance of Make Our Garden Grow, from Leonard Bernstein's Candide, conducted by St. Louis Symphony Orchestra resident conductor, Jimma New. A split screen rotating through several musicians and singers performing from their homes. A conductor, a harpist, a flutist, clarinetist, and a bassoonist. Now, cellists, bassists, violists, and violinists. And two singers smiling at each other. The full string section. Orchestra, the musicians sway with the music, and the second singer joins the musicians.
with singers side by side again. They are joined by French horns, the harpists, and the lower strings. In between the two singers, three more singers join. Twenty more singers join in. The screen fills with the full chorus and orchestra. Quick flashes of individual musicians and singers. Grammy Award-winning soprano, Christine Brewer. Hi, this is Christine Brewer, coming to you from Lebanon, Illinois, just across the river from St. Louis. Now, they told me to keep this short, but you know I sing lots of Strauss and Wagner, and those are some long songs. I got my start at the Opera Theater of St. Louis, first in the chorus, and then singing bigger roles. I went on to sing many of those same roles at the great opera houses all around the world. But I've always held a special place in my heart for the arts community in St. Louis. The arts community in St. Louis is incredible. They feed our soul. And right now, they need our help and support. Please give what you can to Arts United St. Louis. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Andrew Jorgensen, and I am the general director of Opera Theater of St. Louis. As a relatively new St. Louisan, I have been overwhelmed by the quantity, virtuosity, and diversity of the arts in our community, and by the passion and enthusiasm that St. Louisans have for the arts. It's one of the factors that makes our community so great. As we all weather this crisis together, we must look after one another. And it was in that spirit that I approached the Regional Arts Commission and all of tonight's participating organizations with the idea for this benefit. Their enthusiastic support and their extraordinary collaboration shows us what can happen when a community comes together to support each other. I am profoundly grateful to all of the organizations and to all of the sponsors who have made tonight possible. And I am particularly grateful to the St. Louis Shakespeare Festival and to their producing artistic director, Tom Ridgely, for directing tonight's benefit. And so, on behalf of all of my colleagues and all of the artists that we support this evening, to you, our audiences, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being the inspiration for our work. Thank you for supporting us during this challenging time and as we go forward together. And thank you for supporting our artists. Art inspires us to look to a bright future. Art binds us together, and art will bring us together again soon. Lyda Krusen, Mayor of St. Louis. Hi, St. Louis. This is Mayor Lyda Krusen. We're here today to support our arts organizations. Let's think about all the great times that you've had maybe at the Muni, maybe at the Black Rep, or taking your kids on a stroll through the art museum. Our artists always step up for us. 
Now it's our turn to step up for our artists. So please give what you can to Arts United STL. Let's step up for our artists, St. Louis. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor Krusen. We appreciate your support. Next up are COCA students, Peyton Webster and CC Gregory, with their teachers, Alicia Revae Like and Antonio Dothed Boyd, offering up a preview of the next generation of great St. Louis artists. Exterior images of COCA are overlaid with pictures of students, school age girls singing, two dancers arms entwined, a young girl in 1960s costume, a dancer holds his partner mid spin, a dancer with arms raised. Antonio gives notes in a dance studio, Cece seated on the floor. Alicia and Peyton in another studio, both standing. Peyton, a middle schooler, wears a black dress printed with bright pink flowers and a black beaded necklace. Her dark curly hair is pulled into a high ponytail and secured with a sparkly black bow. She smiles and nods. I hate the bus. I want my own car. A car with a heater. Want a TV set and more. A big old house like this one, but everything new. Where can't nobody ever, can't nobody ever tell me what to do. Go out when I want to. When I don't, then I stay. Got magical bracelets, so bullets bounce away. In every room, a TV and my own telephone. And I live in my house, I live in my house by myself all alone. And if I'm lonely, it doesn't matter. I think there's worse than being lonely. There's people who freeze while they wait on their knees and they don't know for what, and they've just been forgotten. You just wait forever if you can't say what for. The day comes soon, I'll pack up the nothing I own. And I'll live in my house and I'll make it okay by myself all alone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's gotta be moving around. Okay. Cece, age 18, stands in the center of the room in a purple leotard with light skirt. Slowly, she raises her arms and lets her body fall backward. The momentum carries her across the room with quick steps. She circles the space and returns to center. Arms pinwheel into a bow. Scooping arms up, she rises to one leg and spins. Bending low, her arms sweep the floor. Her movements are smooth and graceful, with long limbs. A high kick into a turn with arms outstretched. Bending backward, she pushes arms forward. She jumps with bent knees. A series of tight turns carries her diagonally across the room. Cece folds her body forward. With small steps, she runs backward. She leaps with legs outstretched into a split. Her movements are fast, but still smooth and controlled. She moves around the room with wide steps and sharp angles to her arms and legs. The steps become a prance, and her arms rise and fall quickly. She spins to the floor, lifts one leg straight up, and rises. She moves across the room, pushing her arms forward. A tight spin, and she wipes her hands down her own arms body, and legs, moving back to center with slow steps. She 
she rises to her toes, arms raised, then collapses to the floor. She lies prone and pulls herself forward, reaching out. Acclaimed jazz vocalist Denise Times. Hello, everyone. I'm jazz vocalist and actress Denise Times. The working artists of St. Louis are amazing, important, and vital. We all know that these are unprecedented times. And if there was ever a time that we needed each other, it certainly is now. And they need our support. Please give to Arts United STL. <laughs> Photos and videos of performances. That Uppity Theater Company. Hispanic Festival Incorporated. St. Louis Arts Chamber of Commerce. St. Louis Chamber Chorus. MissouriNatureArt.com. Variety Theater. Madco Modern Dance Academy. Early Music Missouri. Artist First STL, Circus Harmony, Stray Dog Theater. I hope you're enjoying tonight's show as much as I am. This is incredible. All right, St. Louis, let's see how much love you've shown our artist. This is our new total, $175,000 race tonight. Thank you, St. Louis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's not too late to give more. We want to thank all of our champions from tonight. And we're ready for your phone calls. You can call any time to add your support to this number. Call us now at the number that you see on your screen. Up next is the Big Muddy Dance Company, remotely performing part of a new piece by their artistic director, Brian Enos. Four screens, each shows a dancer as they turn on a camera and walk away. More dancers appear, each are in a separate place. A living room, a kitchen, a studio, a meadow, a patio. One has a cat sprawled at their feet. The dancers move independently in rhythm with the music. Twelve dancers on separate screens move in unison. Their movements are sharp and precise. They slowly drop to the floor and draw large circles with their arms on the ground and in the air. They rise with a spin. They kick and leap and turn in unison. They face backward. With small movements, they shift from one foot to the other as their shoulders move in the opposite direction. They turn in a tight circle to face forward. They shake their entire bodies. They move in wide circles with large sweeping motions of their arms and legs. Their movements are quick as they dip to the floor, roll, and leap up. The cat runs from the room as the dancers jump. They shift from one foot to the other without moving their upper bodies. The dancers begin clapping in rhythm. The dancers skip in wide circles. They freeze when the clapping pauses. dancer walks forward and turns their camera off. Tony Award winner Beth Level. Hi, this is Beth Level in New York City. I just want to thank you for supporting the Arts United St. Louis Benefit. Thank you for your generosity. We're so grateful. Thank you for helping the artists. Um, and I might not 
be wearing pants. Cheers. <laughs> Got to love Beth. <laughs> Next, we have one of my favorite songs of encouragement from the Repertory Theater of St. Louis and their upcoming production of Little Shop of Horrors. Please join me in welcoming Mark Meadows and Shauna Blass. A man and woman side by side, the woman looking down and away. Lift up your head. She looks up as he holds out a tissue and shakes her head. She touches her red lips lightly. She smiles softly and looks away. Suddenly standing beside. Don't need no makeup Don't have to pretend Suddenly see more here to provide you She brushes hair out of her face and shakes her head lightly See more is your friend Nobody He purses his lips, smiles, and shakes his head. Theater Circle Award winner, Carrie Ely. What, we're on live? Hi, I'm Carrie Ely. I'm an actress here in St. Louis. It is great to have a reason to dress up and to legitimately drink champagne. You all look fantastic. Some of you are a little dressed up, some a little casual. Okay, some of you are in your jams and that, okay. I, I'm sorry, I have to be honest with you. I cannot see you. But oh, how I wish I could. I want to thank you all for being here at the Arts United STL Benefit. I want to tell you that artists all over St. Louis are longing to make a connection with you, the audience. We're longing to have a collaborative and an individual experience. So I'm here tonight to celebrate you and thank you for being here. Please donate at whatever level is comfortable for you. It all adds up and we're all in this together. We will see you again, but in the meantime, take care of yourselves and cheers. And cheers to you, Carrie. 
I can't tell you how inspired I am by tonight's results. And you can join us. There's still time to give. Please consider a gift of $10 or more to the Arts United STL. Every dollar will go directly to artists in need. You can go online by phone or text. Visit the link on your screen for more information. These are historic times we're living through. And to capture that history as it's happening, Metro Theater Company has started a COVID-19 memory project. Sharing a glimpse of tonight are actors Joe Hanrahan, Alicia Reve like Sophia Lynn Osborne, and Carl Overly Jr. with music by Sina Sopro. A woman sits on a couch and plays the violin. In March 2020, Metro Theatre Company launched the ongoing COVID-19 Memory Project to give people of all ages and backgrounds a place to share their experiences and connect through storytelling. I am overwhelmed by everything. My head is constantly swimming. I want so much more than I can get or give right now. I think back. It's crazy how we used to just walk up to people, shook their hand, and didn't worry about getting sick. I'm worried because I'm eating too many snacks. And then being worried makes me eat more snacks, which makes me worried I'm eating too many snacks. See the problem? It's weird walking in the grocery store and feeling scared. I'm half Asian. My mom is full Asian. My mom has gotten swore at. People have turned around and gone the other way, given her dirty looks. In a way, I'm glad we have to wear masks because it's harder to tell someone's ethnicity. People are scared and that makes them judge and assume so much more. I think about people differently, my mind racing when passing them. Are they scared too? My mom is in the late stages of Alzheimer's. She was starting not to recognize me when all this started. I would stand outside her window, but I fear I would confuse her more. I'm frustrated because I lost my best friend. He's gone and I can't see him anymore. COVID took my grandpa away from me. My patients feel the loss. In some cases, nurses' visits are their only contact with the outside world. People are sick and dying. I miss my friends. We miss our kids and grandkids. We miss sitting together, sharing stories. We miss travel, theater, museums, restaurants. Franklin Roosevelt said, to some generations, much is given. Of other generations, much is expected. Now, I have lived long enough to experience both. The morningness dawned quiet and still, void of the noisy morningness of my first grade students. I'm a teacher. Every day my ears were filled with the sound of children's laughter, children's voices asking questions, having silly arguments, singing their favorite songs. I miss those rambunctious, silly, energetic, creative little souls. <laughs> I miss their beautiful noise. I wake up thinking, when will this end? Time is an interesting factor. I have learned to live the day uh, all over again. We share our home with our daughter, her husband, and their newborn. A day for me does not change much. Uh, to a newborn, a day is huge. Nothing in life is as important as holding a newborn. I try to get outside as much as possible. I'm happy when I play games with my family. I have an Elsa puzzle with 48 puzzle pieces. I stay connected to family and friends uh, by FaceTime and Zoom. I can connect with my friends while still doing what I love doing most, dancing. 
I love the New York City Ballet workout video. And what gives me hope is seeing people of all ages going outside their comfort zone, uh, trying new things. It is in my blood to find ways to bring hope to others by sharing experiences. I am okay. Family is safe and we are together. 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 We are together. When I go back to school, I'll be so happy and I'll play with friends. Also, swings, playing on the swings with my friends. Mostly, I hope that we will emerge as better people for it. Better. Better. I hope that we will emerge better people for it. New York Times best-selling author, Ridley Pearson. Do you hear the bells? Hi, this is author Ridley Pearson. In this time of unity and support, thank you for supporting the arts United St. Louis Benefit. Did I say thank you? Turns to two thank women. You. Please give generously to Artist Relief in St. Louis. Photos and videos of performances. Upstream theater. Dances of India. Frank Lloyd Wright House in Epsworth Park. St. Louis Classical Guitar. New Line Theater. Ignite, it only takes a spark. LindsayLou.com. Leverage Dance Theater. Pianos for People, Ferguson. Bach Society of St. Louis. Hey everybody, Zoe Vonderhaar here, hunkered down in my house, just like everybody else. If you are at all able to give to the Arts United STL benefit, your donation would be greatly appreciated. It's a relief fund that will help artists in all categories as we await the return of live theater. So thank you very much. Hope to see you soon and stay safe. As I stand in this beautiful but empty theater, I want you to know that the arts are preparing to come back. Planning is underway to ensure the safety of our audiences, staff, volunteers, and artists who fill stages just like this. Your support for the Artist Relief Fund will protect the vibrancy of our St. Louis arts community until we can safely meet again. To give tonight, please text ARTIST to the number on your screen. And now, let's head to Stages St. Louis's office at the Kent Center for Theater Arts where the wonderful Leah Berry will sing Cockeyed Optimist from Rogers and Hammerstein's South Theater Pacific. Circle Award winner, Zoe Vonderhaar. Inside the Kent Center for Theater Arts, Leah stands between two stained glass windows. When the sky is a bright canary yellow, I forget every cloud I've ever seen. So they call me a cockeyed optimist. Immature and incurably green. I have heard people rant and rave and bellow that we're done and we might as well be dead. But I'm only a cockeyed optimist and I can't get it into my head. I hear the human race is falling on its face and hasn't very far to go. But every whippoorwill is selling me a bill and telling me it just ain't so. I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with this thing called hope and I can't get it out of my heart. Stages St. Louis. 
Tony Award nominee, Caitlin Kinnanen. Hey, it's Caitlin Kinnanen. I just wanted to take a second and thank you all for supporting the Arts United STL benefit. It's now more important than ever to support artists and the arts in general. So thank you for giving and thank you so much for your generosity in supporting the relief of artists in St. Louis. Sending you love. Individually, representatives from arts organizations stand on the stage at Powell Hall, the red seats behind them empty. Jean Dobbs Bradford, Jazz St. Louis. Kelly Pollock, Coca. Jack Lane, Stages St. Louis. Marie Helene Bernard, St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. Tom Ridgely, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Hannah S. Sharif, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Brian Enos, The Big Muddy Dance Company. Ron Himes, The Black Rep. Valerie Miller, St. Louis Ballet. Peter Palermo, The Sheldon. Julia Flood, Metro Theater Company. Karen Shoulders, Circus Flora. Barbara Berner, St. Louis Children's Choirs. Carrie Hauck, Tennessee Williams Festival. Mike Isaacson, The Muni and Andrew Jorgensen, Opera Theater of St. Louis. Being an artist is more than just a job. It's a calling. Our artists connect us. Our artists inspire us. Artists help St. Louis prosper. Artists bring St. Louis joy. Artists will help St. Louis heal. When we can gather again, we'll need artists more than ever. But today, our artists are suffering. Our artists need us. Together, we are asking for you to support the Artist Relief Fund. Any amount, $5, $10, $20, will make such a difference to our artists. Give today at the link on your screen. 100% of your gift will go directly to our artists in need. The St. Louis arts community is strong. The St. Louis arts community is united. We are Arts United STL. Thank you, St. Louis. Together, they stand six feet apart between the empty seats at Powell Symphony Hall. The arts community is uniting tonight in a way that we have never seen before. An unprecedented event for an unprecedented time needed in our community. We are up to, Tracy, let us get the new number, $215,000 in total donations. Thank you, St. Louis. And we're still asking for you to continue to give generously. What, oh, wait, we just got some breaking news. We've just heard from our presenting sponsors, the Nidorfs, that they will match every dollar we raise over our goal up to $300,000. Come on, St. Louis, please dig deep in your pockets. The time is great. The time is now. And we thank you. And now the St. Louis Shakespeare Festival offers an ode to the city, featuring performances by Ken Page, Trevon Griffith, and Christina Jones, with photography from St. Louis from Above, Susie Gorman, and Philip Several Hayward. aerial shots of St. Louis with a reading from Shakespeare. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war. This happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. What a piece of work is man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how expressive. How like an angel In apprehension How like a god The beauty of the world The paragon of animals I have of late But wherefore I know not Lost all my mind. 
At the end, a Shakespeare quote on screen. Society, saith the text, is the happiness of life. Actor and director Jacqueline Thompson. Hey, my name is Jacqueline Thompson and I am a proud St. Louis-based actor and director. Artists have superpowers. They can unite and challenge and change all at the same time. They also have the power to give a space to unspoken voices through a myriad of art forms. There has been a song you've been listening to, there's been a show that you've been watching that has provided comfort. Without it, without artists, we are all lost. So please give and support so that the work can continue to bring hope and light. Thank you. Stay safe. Upward and onward. Emmy and Golden Globe winner John Hamm. Hey guys, John Hamm here. Um, hope everybody's holding up well in quarantine. Uh, you guys probably realize this, but it's been a very difficult time for everybody, but especially the artists in our community. Uh, their gigs are gone. Their opportunity to do what they do is gone. We can't gather. We can't watch people play music and uh, perform. And uh, we're missing that deeply. So I hope everybody uh, will dig deep and uh, donate generously to Arts United St. Louis and keep art alive. Thanks for paying attention. I just got an email. The Artist Relief Fund is available not to just the artists you see on the stage tonight, but also those working tirelessly behind the scenes. Technicians, ushers, and stage managers have also been affected. The need is great, and the time is now. So we ask that you please dig deep. And remember, our presenting sponsors will match if we reach our goal of $250,000 up to $300,000. We thank you so much for that. Help us reach our goal of $250,000 tonight. We can do it, St. Louis. I know we can. In our final performance of the night, the Muni is celebrating all of these artists, both on stage and off, with What I Did for Love from a chorus line. A husky gentleman in front of the Muni. For 102 years, the people of St. Louis have come together here in Forest Park to sit beneath the stars and to relish magical summer nights of unforgettable entertainment here at the Muni. Generations of our own artists and artisans have, along with some of the most famous people in the world, helped to create what we call Muni magic. Dancers, singers, painters, designers, carpenters, and sewers, all right here. The Muni is the soul of St. Louis, a place where a young kid like myself could sit in a free seat and dream of the day that he could be on that magnificent stage. So, in support of all the artists in St. Louis, past and present, we offer you our song. All the singers wearing black, a middle-aged woman. Kiss today, goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow. Wish me luck the same to you. But I can't regret what I did for love, what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry. The gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew. And I won't forget what I did for love, what I did for Travel on, love's what we'll remember. Kiss today goodbye and point me toward tomorrow. We did what we had to. What I 
We fade out to a packed muni. The sun is setting, leaving us with blue and orange skies above the packed muni. St. Louis, it's almost time for us to say goodbye. But first, let's take a look at how much we've raised tonight. From 215 to 233,626 dollars. This is from you tonight, St. Louis, and we thank you. You can continue to donate to the Arts United STL through June the 9th. From all of the United partners, we thank you. We thank you, St. Louis, and a very special thank you to Marie Helen Bernard and our friends at the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra for hosting us tonight in their beautiful Powell Hall home. Thank you again to our presenting sponsors, Noemi and Michael Nydorf, our champions, Edward Jones, Emerson, Switch, and the sponsors you see now on your screen. Karen and Mont Levy, John Russell, Terry and Sally Schnook, Steinberg Family Foundation, Pam and Greg Trapp, PNC, Wells Fargo Advisors. They all gave generously to make tonight a huge success. And thank you to our friends at HECTV for broadcasting tonight's performance and the following media partners. Classic 107.3, the voice for the arts in St. Louis. St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Curbside STL. 88.7 WSIE, The Sound, Alive Magazine, Guided. Tonight, the arts in St. Louis have connected us. And I don't know about you, but I needed this. Across racial, economic, and geographic lines, our hearts go out to everyone who was struggling in our community and our deep gratitude goes to all of the frontline workers who are keeping us safe. We pray for justice, peace, healing, and health. Hundreds of St. Louis artists work together to make this program possible. And we're closing tonight with a big thank you to all of them and to all of you for joining us. The St. Louis arts community is strong. The St. Louis arts community is united. We are Arts United STL, and we thank you. Thank you, St. Louis, and good night. Logo, Arts United STL. Credits, produced by Andrew Jorgensen, Colin O'Brien, Tom Richley, Linda Schulte. Directed by Tom Richley. Switch, John Nickel and Greg Eilers, producers. Regional Arts Commission, Montlevy Chairman. Celia Hostler, Interim Executive Director. HEC, Dennis Riggs, President. Director, John Baker. Powell Symphony Hall, Maggie Bailey, Operations Manager. Opening sequence drone photography by STL from above. St. Louis Blues by WC Handy. The Sheldon, Peter Palermo, Executive Director. Tim Albert, Technical Director. St. Louis Ballet, Jin Horiachi, Executive Director and Artistic Director, Valerie Miller, Director of Development and Community Engagement, Missouri History Museum, Dr. Francis Levine, President and CEO, 
St. Louis Children's Choirs, Barbara Berner, Artistic Director, Adrian Broyles, Director of Children's Choir, Billy Durham, Pianist. Jazz St. Louis, Jean Dobbs Bradford, President and CEO, Bob Bennett, Artistic Director. The Black Rep, Ron Himes, Founding and Producing Director. Circus Flora, Jack Marsh, Artistic Director. Karen Shoulders, Managing Director. Tennessee Williams Festival, St. Louis. St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, Marie Helene Bernard, President and CEO. Eric Finley, Vice President and General Manager. Opera Theater of St. Louis, Andrew Jorgensen, General Director. Coca, Kelly Pollock, Executive Director. The Big Muddy Dance Company, Aaron Prang, Executive Director. Brian Enos, Artistic Director. Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Hannah S. Sharif, Artistic Director. Amelia Acosta Powell, Associate Artistic Director. Metro Theater Company, Julia Flood, Artistic Director. Joe Fowler, Managing Director. John Walbers, Producing Associate. Stages St. Louis, Jack Lane, Executive Producer, Andrew Coleman, Associate Producer. St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, Tom Ridgely, Producing Artistic Director, Colin O'Brien, Associate Producer. The Muni, Mike Isaacson, Artistic Director and Executive Producer. Thank you to the artists and arts organizations for sharing your work. Audio description provided by Mind's Eye. CEO and President Jason Frazier.